Have you ever taken a photo where you look at the back of the camera and you are so happy because you've got a banger of an image and you can't wait to get started with the edit, so you then bring it up on your computer on the big screen and it's not sharp? Well, don't worry about it because today I'm going to show you an advanced method for sharpening your images that might help you to salvage photos such as these ones. Okay, so first let me just set some expectations. If you've got a photo that is so out of focus like this one here, then you're out of luck. There's nothing you can really do to recover something like this. But if you've got an image that is a little bit out of focus, a little bit soft, then this technique is really gonna help you to recover some details so that maybe you can salvage the image. Now, when you've got an image that is a little bit soft, the obvious choice is to apply a little bit of sharpening. However, uh, this word sharpening is a little bit misleading because you're not actually applying sharpening. What you're actually doing is you're introducing some contrast to the image, to certain parts of the image, which make it appear a little bit sharper. And you may have noticed that there is a sharpening filter inside of Photoshop and even Lightroom has a sharpening slider in the develop module. So why can't you use these? And the answer is that you can, but these tools apply a global effect to the whole photo. What that means is that it sharpens the whole image. And so it doesn't give you very good control if you just want to sharpen certain areas of your photo. So instead, I'm going to show you a different way to do it. I'm going to show you a much more advanced way that is going to give you a lot more control. So you're going to be able to uh, control the amount of sharpening that you introduce but also where in the photograph you're introducing. So let's go take a look. Okay, so these are the images that we're going to use uh, to demo this technique. What I wanted to show you though is I've got a selection of different images here uh, because I didn't want you to think that this only works for a particular genre. You can use this across any type of photo photography. Um, so first of all, what I wanted to show you was these two images here. They look very similar to each other. They're actually two different shots. And what I wanted to show you is if I zoom into the eyes uh, and uh, let my Lightroom catch up, let me get to the develop module. There we go. So uh, what you'll see here is that the eyes are very much in focus. The tip of the nose is not, okay? But if I go to the next photo, you'll notice, let me bring it up and sort of line it up again like the other one. You'll see that now the tip of the nose is in, in focus, but not the eyes. The eyes are a bit soft. So let me, again, let me go back to the other one. You can see that it, uh, the camera has picked up the front of the nose uh, in this second shot here and focused on the nose. And so we've got these eyes that are not as sharp as they could be. So this is a perfect candidate for uh, trying this technique out. So what we're gonna do is we're going to open this up in Photoshop. And, and once it's opened up in Photoshop, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the background image, so it's just a regular image, and we're going to make two duplicates of it. And we do that by doing the command J key combination or control J. So we're going to do that twice. And just to keep things organized, uh, we are going to name these layers. So this is the bottom layer. And this is the top layer. The other thing we're going to do is we are going to right mouse click on both top and bottom, uh, just one at a time. And then we're going to go from there. We're going to right mouse click and then we're going to go to convert to smart object. Uh, that way, any effect that we apply on these layers, uh, we can go back and edit it. We'll do the same thing for the next one. And now we've got two smart objects. Okay, so let's start off by clicking the top layer and we're going to do a command I or control I to invert the image. It's going to turn into a negative. Once we've done that, we're gonna change the blending mode from uh, the normal mode into vivid light. And when you do that, the screen will probably go completely gray. You may have some smudges like I do here. That's okay, that's supposed to happen. Uh, again, on the top layer, we're going to go up to the filter menu on the top. We're going to click the blur sub menu, and then we're going to select Gaussian blur. It's going to open up this dialog box and this is where we dial in the effect. What this is actually doing is it's letting detail come through but holding back anything that's not detail. And the way that we dial it in is using this uh, dial down here. So if we push that to the right, more detail is going to come through. I'll push it right to the side so you can see what happens. Uh, or if we go to the left, then we get less details. What we are interested in is the eyes because that's the part of the photograph that's blurry. So I'm just gonna zoom in 
a little bit so that you can see uh, over here. So look. Okay. So we can see that at that point, at the moment, it's at 1.3. And the eyebrows are starting to come through. Same with the eyelashes. So we're just going to crank it up a little bit more, maybe. Uh, let's go to... Let's go to there, maybe 1.8. Uh, because we turned this into a smart object, we'll be able to go back in there and then change this later if it's not quite enough. Uh, when we're ready, we just uh, click the OK button here. And then what we do is we are going to group these two layers, the top and the bottom layer now. So we click on the top layer that we go shift click on the bottom layer. And then we can do a command G or control G to group those two layers together. Um, once we do that, we are going to change now the blending mode of the group. So we select the group and then we go we drop down in the uh, blending modes and we are going to go down to overlay. Now, uh, you can see already that it's done a really good job at sharpening the eyes. So this is after. Let me show you what we started with. I'm going to turn it off. So this is before and that's after. Again, before and after. Now what you may have noticed is that it's applied a little bit more to the nose. I don't really want to see this pause too much. So one of the things that you can do, just like in any other um, either a group of layers or layers inside of Photoshop, is you can put in a layer mask. So we're going to cl click on the group. We are going to click on the layer mask and then we are going to invert the layer mask. So we select the layer mask. We go Command I or Control I to turn it off. And then we select a brush by pressing the B key and we want to paint white on this black layer. OK, so you can see here that I've got selected uh, white. Uh, if you've got if you want to toggle between uh, white and black, you can just hit the X key on your keyboard and it will do that. And then using a brush and I'm going to lower my flow rate to something really low, like maybe like 15 percent. And with a brush, I'm just going to brush some of that effect back into the eyes there. OK, uh, and just you can see and now that's coming back, uh, all that details coming back and it's looking really natural. So again, let's turn it off. So that's what we started with before and that's after. Hopefully that's coming through in the video again, before and after. So this is a perfect example of how you can fix uh, an image, but only again, only if it's slightly out of focus. Again, you're not going to be able to do anything if the shot is completely blurry. OK, let's go back to Lightroom now. And what I want to do now is I want to show you how you can enhance an image that's actually in focus. OK, so let's take this one here. If I zoom into that, you'll see that it actually is in focus. OK, so we're going to do the same thing uh, to uh, exactly the same thing that we just did for the to the other shot. So we are going to open up. Let's open the original. Uh, we're going to open that inside of Photoshop. And one of the cool things about the technique that I just showed you is that you can actually build an action out of this. And I've done this already for my system here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a copy of this action inside of the description of this video. So if you want to download it and just install it so that you don't have to uh, do all the steps manually every single time, uh, you can just download that, install it into your system, and then uh, it will appear as it does in here, for example, where I've got Ministry of Photo Sharpening. Uh, we click on it there and then we click the play button. And I don't know why I accidentally created a layer, but let me get rid of this layer here. Uh, so when you open it up, you click on your layer, you click the play button here after selecting the action. And you'll notice here on the bottom here, all the all of the layers have now been created and you've got everything else. And this is going to save you loads and loads of time. So it's applied the changes to our image. So let's zoom in to see how much uh, extra detail we've got. So let's have a look at before. That's before. This is after. Again, before and after. And if at this point you think that you've got this, there's too much of the effect, it's too strong, what you can do, because we've turned our layers into smart objects, what a smart object allows you to do is to go back into that layer and then alter or change the settings of any filters that you've applied to it. So in this case, we can see the Gaussian blur is just over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on that and we can go back and we can modify a Gaussian blur, which we call it a blur, but it's actually reducing blur. It's introducing sharpness. 
and then we're going to just turn it down just a little bit and then click OK. And now when we turn it on and off, you can see that the effect is not as pronounced. OK, but that looks a little bit nicer for it. So um, we've got one more image, I think, that I can show you. Uh, I've got two more images, actually. Uh, let's do it on this one here. In fact, let's open both of these images at once so that we can uh, have a look at both of them inside of Photoshop. So this is a shot that I took when I was in the Netherlands a few years ago. And if I zoom in here, you can see uh, this lovely signs in here. So we're going to apply this to, to, to this one here. Even though the shot is in focus, we're just going to apply it anyway and see what kind of a change we can get. So keep a look at, there we go. It's applied it really quickly when you use the action. Uh, and I can see it straight uh, straight away in here. Let me zoom in a little bit more maybe to see if that, uh, if that helps you there to see the difference. Uh, let me turn it off. So that is on at the moment. So this is uh, after, this is before, this is after, before and after. Specifically, have a look at this side over here. Okay, where it says Nord uh, Brabant. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but if I go to before and after, before and after, you can see how much of a difference that's made. Uh, have we got another image here? Let's do the same thing here. We're going to play this one. And this is an architectural shot that I took a while back. Again, this is straight out of camera. Uh, but again, let me go to before and after, before and after. Let me zoom in to this section here. I think this is a good indicator of the area to see the difference. Again, we're going to go before, after, before and after. And again, if you wanted to, if you think that the effect is too strong, you can just double click on it and you can just dial it back just a tiny little bit. And I think that that's about right for this shot. Let's do before, after, before, after, before, after. Anyway, that is what I wanted to show you. Uh, like I said, this is something that you can use on your images that are actually in focus or images that are slightly out of focus to try and uh, recover them. And uh, hopefully this is something that you can introduce into your uh, into your workflow. And I am going to put a link or I'll put, I'll put a link to the actual uh, action so that if you don't want to create it yourself, you can just download the one that, I, that I'll put up and then you can just install that inside of your Photoshop. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did and you would like to support me, you can do so by clicking the like button. It's completely free, but it makes a huge difference to me. And if you want to see more content like this, then make sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you have any questions about anything that I covered here today, just pop them down in the comment section of this video and I'll be happy to help you where I can. Anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.